guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Regan. If you are new here, um, I do clean beauty, things like that. So if you're into it, click the subscribe button down below. I'm going to try to make this video short, but it's going to be a longer one. So just warning, kick back, relax, enjoy the ride. Okay, so this is my end of the month wrap up and I've wanted to do this for a while. I just honestly didn't have the time before I started doing this more as my full-time thing. So yeah, here I am doing it. And what this will include, I made a little sticky note list, my faves and flops, comments from you guys that I think are general comments that people would be interested in. So I already have gone through and looked at and answered all of my comments from this past month as of today. And then I selected about five or six comments that I think were general comments others might be interested in having questions to. And then I'm kind of doing a low buy this year and honestly for the rest of my life that's what I want to do. I have some things to talk about with that so when we get to that part of the video we'll talk about it. Um yeah so let's just roll into the meat. Okay guys, so we're starting out with my faves. So this is a mix of body makeup, and just kind of lifestyle type stuff. Okay, so this is the Dr. Bright, their Mint Natural Whitening Mouthwash with Activated Charcoal. This is EWG Verified. So whenever I did my oral care video, probably six plus months ago, a lot of you guys asked me about a good mouthwash. This is it. This is it. I hadn't tried one really up until then. I tried the Oral Essentials one, but it was too salty. And then I tried the Tom's one and I just didn't like it that much. So this one, so good. It keeps my breath so fresh. It's not like I'm tasting it, but it tastes good. The flavor is nice. It's not super harsh as well, like a Listerine would be. And let me look it up really fast. I have my telephone right here. That's how you say telephone in Hebrew. So this is 16 ounces um, and it's about $12 and this has lasted me a month. I'm thinking about getting the 32 ounce one with the pump for next month. Yeah, I think that's the way I'll go because it's $28.99 for that, which, and that would probably last me like three months, I'm guessing. So yeah, I, this is a rebuy for me. Great product, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so I got this in my Good Being box. This is the Sade and Baron Fresh Luxe Lux Mist. I love this. I really, really like this. I've ordered a few various fragrances and things that I haven't talked about so much on here um, that are more clean, obviously. And this one is probably the, my favorite thing and I got it in a subscription box. I like that it's a little bit more light, but it has that neroli in it, which I love. It has bergamot. It just, it smells really, really nice and it doesn't smell too alcoholy. That has been an issue I've had with some other more natural fragrances that I've tried is that the base is always an alcohol and you can, that always is pretty strong and I can smell that, so. This one's really nice, I really like that. Okay, and then I have been using this. This is the Aura Honey Bee Gardens Crystal Infused Body Oil. I think this is $13.99 and you get two fluent ounces. So I've used this after about six showers on my whole body and it's already down to here. I really like this guy. I love a good body oil. It smells good, it smells like sunflower oil mixed, what else? I can smell the rosemary, I can smell the sunflower oil, and I can smell the rosemary and peppermint. It's just a nice refreshing scent. It's a nice light body oil. I love a good body oil. This is a great product and it's cute. It has these amethyst crystals in the bottom and everything. I'm more about it for the oil and moisturizing properties. Uh, I like oils for after baths or showers where I can just use the oil really quickly, rub it all over my body and not have to wait for it to seep into my skin. Okay, so something else I did like because if you're not into the body oils, I really have liked this Indie Lee. It's their essential body lotion. This is a new product. They actually sent this to me. I was surprised how much I liked it. It definitely has that citrus scent to it and it's kind of like a body serum lotion it's not really thick 
So it's not like a body butter or a cream. It's a more serum liquidy lotion, which does absorb into the skin quick. I think that's kind of a theme of the lotions and things I like. I do like a nice body butter when I need it, such as in the dead of winter somewhere, but I don't always need that for every day. So those are, these two are pretty much everyday products that I've been using and I've really liked and enjoyed. Okay, so I got this as a sample from Lush when I did my Lush video. This is their Like a Virgin Naked Cold Cream. I really have liked this. I've used it as a oil cleanse. So what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll just rub it all over my face and I'll take two reusable cotton rounds that I have, get them wet and then just massage it off and up and it leaves behind a nice oil. It smells really good, that's why I smell it. It just smells like a light cream sickle. So this isn't the cleanest product ever because it does have fragrance in it. I do believe someone told me that they do have phthalate free fragrance, so I can totally get behind that if that is a true statement. Uh, but I have really liked this nonetheless. It just, it's worked well with my skin. And I have, I've used it probably five, six times, so yeah. Okay, and then makeup I've really liked. So I really liked this, and this was a surprising thing, this Pacifica Stellar Gaze Mascara. I'm not using it today, I used something else, but it was a nice lengthening and strengthening, and that's what it says it does, mascara. I think it also added a nice amount of volume as well. So yeah, this was definitely one worth checking out. Uh, yeah. Okay, and I've really enjoyed as well this Olive and M Eye Serum. I talked about this in my Eye Serums video. This is just a newer product to me and a newer concept because it's more of an oil serum than a serum cr or cream. And what I mean by serum is an aloe-based or glycerin-based serum or water-based. What I've been doing with this guy is using my Indie Lee Eye Wake and Eye Serum under my eyes, and then at night I will use a drop of this just for some added extra moisture. I need the added extra moisture. <laughs> All right, and then I also tried the Han. This is the Skincare Cosmetics and All Natural Concealer and Fair. This is a definite dupe for the Fit Glow Concealer. I love the Fit Glow Concealer, but it is between $38 and $42. This one's under $20, I believe. So yeah, this is a definite dupe for that. It, it just is. I might do a side-by-side -side comparison because I really feel that way. Okay, and then I have been loving on Kosa's lipstick. This is shade Rosewater. I'm not wearing this again today. I'm wearing some stuff from Top Shelf Tuesday for this week. I just really like their freaking lipsticks, guys. They're nice, moisturizing. Also, the pigment stays in place. So they're a little bit more opaque and the pigment just doesn't move. So I like that. And as they wear down, it stains the lip a little bit, so you still have some color on your lips. So I've been digging this stuff. Uh, it's a nice lipstick formulation. Okay, now for the flops. All right, so I can't remember if this was within the month, but this is just a flop for me, guys. I am wearing it today. It's the Au Natural Mascara. It's their new mascara. So my views on this, when I started Clean Beauty about six years ago, this I probably would have loved and thought it was great, but now there's just so many other things. Like the Pacifica mascara is really good. Even the Physicians Formula mascaras, a couple of them, a couple of them, not all of them, a couple of them are really good. There's just other stuff that's cheaper that, and I know this one is supposed to be very, very clean, but it's kind of messy to put on. Even today when I was putting it on, some chunks got on my cheekbones and I had to clean it off. It just is a little bit messier and I just think there's better stuff out there. For the price, I don't have time for it. Again, if this would have been six years ago when this came out, I would have been all up on it and thought it was amazing. But now there's just so much stuff out there. The Lily Lolo mascara, other things that are really good and clean. You might still see this though in Top Shelf Tuesday because I did pay $33, I believe, plus shipping to get it to me. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I will be using that until it is empty in a couple months. This guy. I keep this around and I don't know why. This is the 100% Pure Creamy Long Last Liner. I've been using this for a while, um, probably a year and a half, 
and it's just not that good of an eyeliner. There's just, again, it's another one where there's better stuff out there. And it's expensive. I think this is $26. For $26, it should be super effective, super lasting pigments. The Burt's Bees eyeliner is redder. If you're looking for that kind of luxe price point and those luxe products, the KRY's eyeliners are better. The Antonym for $19 has this nice little, where are they? This nice sharpener on the end works better than this stuff. So this is okay-ish and that's all I would give it is okay-ish. It works decently if you are putting it on dry eye skin. I know that's weird, but when I'm putting it on my lash line, it works okay. But if I'm using it on my waterline, poof, disappear, it's gone. So I do use a lot of water lining techniques, tight lining techniques. So this just isn't for me and I, I just wouldn't recommend it because I think there's other alternatives out there that are more effective. Okay. And then RMS Beauty. <sighs> okay. So I have their magic luminizer and I got this in the Alia box that came out some name, I don't remember when it came out. In the past year it's come out. And this just, it's, it's, I don't know. It's kind of dried up. It's not as creamy as when I first got it. It has a 12 month shelf life, but it hasn't even been 12 months and it's just not that amazing of a product. I'm not in love with RMS Beauty. I just feel like there's better stuff out there. And my thing with this is, I feel like it has so much more potential to dry out because you expose all of the product to air like this. So you'll probably see it more, but it's kind of dried out a bit. I'm going to keep it around because I think I want to do a little RMS Beauty video because I have a few of her things now that I've gotten randomly through random ways. But yeah, I, that one just, I don't know, it just dried out pretty fast for me. So. Yeah, that one's a flop. Okay, another flop was the Pacifica Love Stone palette. I do not recommend this palette. It gave me a horrible reaction and I kind of was trying to get through the reaction and then I was like, what the hell, no. And I returned that palette. I don't really appreciate what they did with that palette and what I think happened with it. I think that they off-sourced manufacturing to a Chinese company because it said made in China on the back. And I think they're kind of messing with, I'm not sure because I don't, work there. I know nothing about them. I kind of think that they might be ready to do a sell-off and I don't know the future of what they're doing, but I don't, I just don't know. But I just feel like because all of their other products are made in the U.S. and that one was made in China, it just was kind of odd to me. So I'm kind of thinking something's going on with the company. And I also think it just wasn't a good product straight out. It just was a shitty product. Sorry, said, said that word. Sorry, I do curse sometimes in real life. That palette was much cheaper for the amount of product that I got than any of my other little uh, Moonflower palette, Pink Nudes palette, Crystal Moonstone, uh, Beachy Punk or whatever. All of those are $18. That Love Stone was $22 and it had almost double the amount of product. So I, it was a cost thing. And then I also, I just think something's going to go on with them. And I feel like there might be a sellout or buyout or something. I don't, I'm not hundred percent, but just that's kind of what I think. Um, okay. And then the last thing that was a death flop, I'm not very happy with this product. So this is the All Evolve Age, their Ultra Repair Reconstructing Mask. This was, I had such high hopes for it. I really like the scent of it. It's this nice florally candy type scent. <sighs> my hair is up like this today and I washed my hair yesterday and I use this and I used it how you're supposed to. It said, apply to wet hair after cleansing, dispense evenly with wide tube comb and leave in hair for a minimum of 15 to 20 minutes. I did that, I took a bath. So I washed my hair, I put this stuff in and then I turned the bath on and took a bath for 15 minutes to let this absorb. Then it says rinse with warm water or leave in hair overnight. So I rinsed it out with warm water and then I was blow drying my hair. My hair just felt so greasy from this product. It still looks greasy. I just haven't had the time to rewash my hair and restyle it. But yeah, this was just, I might try it again just on my ends. And I, will, I didn't heavily put this in my roots. All that happened was I put a larger amount down on my ends and then I put a little bit that was left over on my hands up on my roots and my hair, it was so greasy. So I might try it one more time just on the tips to see, but that was, 
that was a special product. I wouldn't recommend it. So I just wanted to share some comments from the month that I thought were interesting, you guys would be interested, and in, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so from Amanda, I got, hey Reagan, your videos have been great quality lately and I love the consistent uploads. Thank you. So I have switched to uploading um, five days a week. I'm trying to make this my full time thing. Right now, obviously I'm not making like tons and tons of money off of it. Maybe one day I will, but I just really enjoy it and I kind of have the time right now. So yeah, I'm doing this. And also I did get a new lens, number two. Uh, so thank you, yeah, the quality has improved. I think it's improved as well. I feel like the quality of my content has gotten better. Even I'm able to zoom in and out more. One thing I don't like is whenever bigger YouTubers say like, oh, I'm not, they kind of make excuses excuses or go around the fact that they don't zoom in close to their faces. I think that's because they don't want you to really see what the product looks like. Me personally, I want you guys to see, but I've just, I've noticed that because now I have this lens and I'm not a huge YouTuber by any means at all. And I could afford it. I think it was $300 and you can definitely zoom in and out with it. So I don't understand that. Um, and then I got seven Lazarin. Thank you for sharing. And I would love to hear about your time as, as an American woman in Israel. So I did my video about all the places that I've lived this month, just so everyone has a reference whenever I'm talking about some random place that I've either been to or lived. So you guys kind of are caught up on my life. Um, <sighs> Here's my deal with talking about Israel on my channel that can be very hard. My husband is Israeli and I don't want to bring the negative people onto my channel by talking about Israel a ton on my channel, if that makes sense. But it's such a big part of my life as well because I'm married to an Israeli. So we'll see. Like I'll just say we'll see. It was definitely an interesting experience living in Israel as an American non-Jewish woman, I will say. Um, that I could write a freaking book about it. So maybe I will one day, but. So this is just part two. They made a comment first and now it's the question. So question for you, when you do Top Shelf Tuesday and there's product that you do not like, what do you do with them? Do you keep them even if you don't like them? Give them to a friend? I would like the video you suggested on PR stuff too. So I am going to do a video about PR stuff that's coming. I plan my videos like a month in advance, guys. So it might be a little bit, but it, it's gonna come at some point. Uh, okay, so with Top Shelf Tuesday, if there's something I don't like, I usually just put it back in the mix and I'll use it again eventually because sometimes what I've realized, maybe I don't like a setting powder with that foundation, but I like it with something else. So it's kind of recently, I used the Cloven Hollow concealer with the Kosa's uh, face oil tint and I really liked it where before I didn't like the Cloven Hollow concealer I thought it was a bad concealer so I do keep a lot of things some stuff I do pass off to people if it's clearly not for me I mean clearly there's I've gotten foundations from companies through PR and stuff that I'm like who are you sending this to I'm wait no and I pass that stuff off to friends um, I do pass things off to friends I have a pretty big giveaway box going on right now that I'm probably gonna be doing a giveaway soon yeah that's what I do with stuff from top top shelf Tuesday some things and eventually I will just empty it out because I can't really give this to a friend or even do a giveaway with it because it's mascara that's no that's a no-go even eyeliner I wouldn't do that with so there are some things I pass to people again and some things I don't I do swaps with other bloggers as well so that's another common thing okay then I have this question from Crystal and she said do you think you'll stay in California <sighs> I don't know. That's a that's a very good question because I don't know. Um, Don and I really wanted to move to Austin, and then we saw this Vice video all about how it was just very interesting. It was all about these people who are anti-vaccine, but not because of the health issues they people think wrongly that are associated with vaccines. I'm actually pretty pro va vaccine just because I've lived in places where people have polio. They get horrible diseases that in the West we have concentrated and, er and eliminated. So I've just seen it. I think you have to see these things firsthand. This video, maybe I'll link it down below. It was all about the rights of the people and how people ha should have the right to decide for themselves. And it's just kind of a public health issue. So I don't know. I would love to move to Austin, but the vaccination rate needs to go up a little bit. I had a couple of things about China. 
And one of the comments was, most makeup made in China does, does animal testing, not cruelty free. Okay, that's actually false. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, you're wrong. It's more, if you saw my where I've lived and everything video, I've worked with China a bit. I know all about manufacturing there and stuff. Okay, so China is a very tricky government system with things like this. If something is made in China, that does not necessarily mean that it's tested on animals. It's only foreign produced goods that are imported into China and sold as imports in China that are tested on animals. For example, brands like, uh, I'm trying to think, Lancome, Estee Lauder, those kind of brands, they are a foreign brand. And whenever they're imported into China, they animal testing is done per the government. And that's not a way that the Chinese government tries to keep foreign goods out of China in a way. And that's why you don't see a lot of smaller brands in China. So yeah, that that's just how it is. Things that are actually made in China though, this is interesting, do not have animal testing. So yeah, that, that's just how it goes. They, they have some funky rules for things that are made there that are made domestically, manufactured domestically. So I've decided I'm going to be doing a low buy. Why I'm doing this low buy is Honestly, Dad and I are fine financially. We pay our mortgage every month. We pay our credit cards every month. I'm not doing this because I need to pay down any debt necessarily. Our only debt is our house. I'm doing this more because I just buy crap. I don't know. It's not even that I buy crap. I buy things without thinking about it. I feel like with the internet, it's so easy to do one click buy for everything and I don't need everything. So what I've decided my low buy is going to be is I've set a budget for myself every month that I'm allowed to spend on beauty, clothes, kind of home good stuff, but not really because I don't really enjoy buying things for my house. I'm very minimalist when it comes to household goods. I just am. I've moved so much around the world. That stuff you cannot take with you. It's pointless to even take with you and you realize it's worth nothing when you leave it. So that's just, that's stuff that I'm not that into. But beauty and clothes are things that I do tend to buy a bit more of. So what I'm doing is I've made a list of all of the things that I want. And I've also made a little list of all of the things that I'm glad I didn't buy that I put into the shopping cart and almost purchase. And I'm just kind of going to do check-ins with you guys monthly and tell you about what I want, what I'm going to buy, what I didn't buy. My budget for every month is going to be $250. That's pretty reasonable considering I do have a beauty channel here on YouTube and I film five days a week. I'm going to need things every once in a while, but I have so much already that that's kind of a BS excuse. Um, I will be accepting PR. I don't get absolutely everything in PR and tons of stuff in PR, but I will accept PR. Again, I'm doing five videos a week, guys. I need to have stuff for content. Um, and this is kind of part of my job. PR is kind of a perk, but there's a, I, I'm, whenever I do my PR video, it'll be interesting because I think you guys will understand more what it's like to get PR. And it's great. I'm not saying it's not, but there also is a little bit of obligation behind it that you will at least use it. So yeah. So those are my parameters where $250 includes anything that I need. I mean, I have so much stuff that I shouldn't even need to spend $250, but I need to have that there in case I need something. If I run out of all of, for example, I even include toothpaste and mouthwash in that because we have three going right now because I'm a blogger and because I'm like, oh, maybe I'll talk about all these at once. So yeah, this kind of stuff will be included in it, but it's also not so expensive. You know, it's $30 for a three month supply of this. So I can stand that kind of thing. So what I'm glad I didn't buy, this is not necessarily a anti-haul. This is stuff I actually wanted and really considered buying. I was there. I was there at the shopping cart, almost pressed sin, and I did not. So there's a couple things. Uh, the Ilia primer and new concealer. <sighs> this is hard because I'd like to try it and maybe I will, but I, I don't really use a primer 
And the concealer, I kind of would like to swatch it first because concealers are very tricky with my pale, pale skin where I need a certain shade of concealer. So I would like to swatch that first or see even someone else use it before I'm going to use it and review it to know if it's worth it or not because yeah. Um, and then I don't use a primer. So it'd be interesting to try once and maybe if they sold a $3 sample or something, that'd be great and I'd try it and see, oh, that's how it works. But I don't need the full bottle at whatever cost or price it is. So those are things I almost purchased because they're new, but I did not and I'm proud of myself. This one I kept going back and forth on back and forth. So Fit Glow has a beauty discovery and maybe it's gone now, but with Beauty Heroes, I believe it was $59 and you got a lip serum and one of their new palettes. All right, so I have a lip serum by them and I love it. I actually really do like Figlo's lip serums. They're pricey, but they're one of the things that I do think is worth it from that line. And I even have one that's full that I have back in one of these bins that once my other one is empty, I'm going to bring out new. So I just d did not need the lip serum. Did I want another one? Yes, heck yes I did, because I really like it. But I have, I have so much lip product. I have a full drawer right here just of lip glosses. This is just a small handful. Yeah. So I just didn't need that. And then I really did want to try that palette. Everyone was doing videos about it. Everyone was trying it and I really wanted to, but it's just such a freaking expensive palette. And yes, it's a good deal with the Beauty Heroes, but it's still expensive. And when the Beauty Heroes thing is over, it's still gonna be a 69, basically $70 palette that only includes four eyeshadows and a blush. So, yeah, that's very expensive when you think about how much product you're getting. And the packaging's not worth it. I'll just say that. It's not super luxury packaging. I don't think that they optimize the packaging on that. And I think it's pretty similar to the 100% Pure palettes, which I have two of. So I just didn't need that. And I almost bought it three different times. I got so close three different times and just being like, okay, I'm just gonna do it. Cause you know, once you press the button, it's pressed and it's done and it's on its way to you but I'm so, I am glad I did not purchase that. That's just $59 I didn't need to spend. Alrighty guys, so then I have a list of things that I want, but I don't necessarily need right now. So these are things I just would like and would like to try and eventually I may purchase them. Eventually they may come off the list. So I want a mini fridge for skincare. <laughs> Reading these out loud, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I want the Josh Rosebrook Vital Balm Cream. I tried a sample and I really liked it. I also want the Josh Rosebrook Cacao Mask. I tried a sample of that, really liked it. I don't necessarily need these products right now. Once I use up some product, that would be a repurchase or my version of a repurchase. Maybe I wouldn't repurchase the same thing, but because I'd have some empties, I'd get myself some newbie. And then I do want a wallet of some sort, a new wallet. I try and get a new one about every year or two, just because, yeah, I've been using mine for I think a year and a half and it's getting kind of grungy. Okay, so I want to get resubscribe to the Beauty Heroes subscription box, Art of Organics and Box Walla. I haven't tried Art of Organics or Box Walla and I'd like to. I feel like there's definitely some value in those boxes. I just don't need to until I've almost emptied out all of my skincare, truly. that's That might even be a next year thing that I do. I thought it'd be a this year thing, but I have so much going on with everything that I have that I just don't need those right now. I want them because it's nice to get something every month, but I don't need them. Okay, and then the May Lindstrom Pendulum Potion, I want that. I tried a sample and really liked it. I really want the May Lynch from Blue Cocoon. I really do. I really, really do. But it's $180. I need to be at a point where I really, really, really want that before I purchase it. Something I can actually need, I like to have a candle burning in the background. You can't even see it right now of my videos. I need to get some more candles because this is my last one, but I don't need it currently. So not until this one is burned all the way down am I going to purchase that. And that will probably be something that I do purchase. I want to try the Ilia mascara because I never have. And while people's coming out with new palettes and I'd like to try one and I'd like to try their lipstick as well because I haven't tried that yet. 
So those are things I want that are just on the list. They might get taken off, they might, some things might get added, but things need to be on the list. I need to actively be wanting them for a while before I purchase them. So that's just what I'm doing currently. I call it a low buy. The reason I'm doing this is not, I'm not trying to get out of debt or anything because I don't have debt. And that's just my reality that I'm living in. What I'm trying to do is save money for experiences rather than things. So we have the disposable income to get either things or experiences, but not things and experiences. So right now I'd like to focus on purchasing less things and having more experiences. Alrighty guys, I know this was a long video, so thanks so much for sticking with me. This had a lot of meat to it. This whole video could probably have just been four different videos, like pretty much a week of videos, but I'm always going to try and condense it down into this one and hopefully cut it to 30 minutes, we'll see. So thanks so much guys for checking out this video and have a wonderful, wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world.